Okay, welcome to uh, my final tutorial on the physics tools in Blender. We're going to do a very, very quick um, fluid simulation um, today. Okay, the fluid simulation is very, very similar to um, the smoke one, but it's a lot easier to get right. Okay, it's a lot easier to, um, there's less things to make mistakes with. So, here we go. What we need today is we need um, a domain a thing for the fluid to exist within. So we're going to use this one here. We're going to press the S key. Whoopsie, I'm going wrong. S key. Size it up. And my liquid is going to exist within this box. Okay. Now, because I can't really see inside the box right now, I'm going to press the Z key. The Z key turns it into wireframe mode, as we discussed in a previous tutorial. I'm going to press Shift A. And I'm going to add myself um, a cube. Okay, here's basically what I'm going to do. The box, the big outside one, is going to be the domain where the liquid can exist, and the box on the inside is going to be the liquid. Now, it's as simple as this. Have a watch. We go over to the physics tool, so I'll drag it across a little bit further. We're going to call this one here fluid, and it's going to be the fluid. So the inside bits that are the liquid. The outside one is going to be fluid, but it's going to be the domain. Now, there's a few settings down here. Now, because I haven't got the fastest computer in the entire world, and I want this to be fast for the demonstration, see what it says under the resolution? The bigger this number is, the nicer the liquid looks. Okay. And it gives you a preview that you can actually watch stuff happen inside the um, screen and it gives you the final view as if, if you rendered it. Right now, if I go through and change it from preview into final, then everything looks smoother. That's because the viewport display, that's this viewport right over here, is now displaying what it looks like in the final resolution at the moment. Okay. Um, for the sake of speed, I'm actually going to change these both down to about, let's say, um, 30. Right, let's make that 10, just so I can show them between final and preview. And then I'm going to press the bake fluid simulation. And so I press that button. Now, um, this is um, like an alpha something or other version I'm using right now. And normally, about now, you would see a little number just down below my cursor going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's telling you how far along the animation, how many frames has gone through and rendered. Now, I just saw it, um, the little warning box at the top zip off there, so it means it has finished. So now if I go in here and, um, and I press play or I press Alt A, then the fluid simulation will go ahead, splat. Hmm. Not horribly exciting, but that's because I've done it in hideous preview 10 mode. I'm going to change the viewport display now to the final. Splash. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go through and do it in a, a much more detailed mode in a second. But I'm just going to turn the Z key off. Okay, and here we are with the Z key off. And now I can see the liquid as it should be. It's in um, as a normal shading mode. Splash. Okay, not horribly exciting. But if I go through now and beef up the resolution for the final and the previews, that'll give me a lot better definition. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to bring it up to, let's say, um, 65 like it was before. I'll do the preview in 10 because I'm not really interested in that right now. And I'm going to go through. Uh, I'll stop this escape key. And then go bake. And right now, it's ticking along. You can see up there it's um it's it's rendering, it's um it's thinking about how the droplets falling down are gonna hit the outside and, and go from there. I'm gonna pause it and I'll come back to this in a second once it's been um once it's completed. Okay, it's finished doing that. Um that took about uh two minutes I think it was. And I'm gonna go Alt A. Oopsie, click on the properly, Alt A and splash. You can see now the resolution at 65 is a lot nicer than it used to be. I can go down to the timeline, I can press pause, and I can go through and whoosh, scan it backwards and forwards, and get um, exactly the right part that I want to look at, and all that sort of stuff. Now, 
um, to any one of these guys here, these um, these animations, a few things we can add. Um, if you wanted to, you could go through and add um, another box here, for example. I'm just going to go through and, and squish it down. And I could turn this fluid thing into a um, obstacle. Okay, and now, oh, notice how I clicked on the on the liquid. Um, I once I've clicked on the liquid, I'm already clicking on the domain again. As I go through, I'm going to change it to um, back down to a thing that's going to go faster. Thirty. Um, I'm going to go bake again. And what I'll do this time here, it's going to um, go down and it's going to bake it with the object I've just added um, as an obstacle. Okay, so it's going to hit it and then do stuff. Okay, that's just um, another thing you add to a, a fluid thing. So it's awesome um, animation once of from Blender. Um, one of the demos was a uh, liquid flying through uh, a cityscape. You know, sort of like um big disaster movie type one. Anyway, so that's it. Um, let's go through. Hitting the obstacle. Put it back at the beginning. And leaving bits behind. Of course, because it was in a really, really low resolution, doesn't look too hot there. Anyway, but Here's another thing. I'm going to get rid of the obstacle. Delete. I notice that the object still seems to be there. By the way, this object here, the thing that it was at the beginning, if you don't want to see it, all you do is you go up in this little view thing up here, you find out what it is that on there, and you turn off the visible. You know, it's invisible to the eye, and the one up there means invisible to the camera when you render the final thing out. If you don't want to see it, I'll leave it there because I'm going to use it for the next thing. Right. Stop animation, escape key. Now I'm going to turn this thing here. Instead of being a fluid, I'm going to change it into an inflow. Okay, inflow means that the liquid is going to start flying into my animation from this object. I'm going to make it flow out in the x direction by, let's say, 0.6. Now, if I go back to my domain, right click or command click on that, and I press my um, bake fluid simulation thing it'll go through and instead of actually having this thing here as a single drop of liquid that's being um, dropped through my scene Does that work? I'm not sure I'll click it again just in case instead of being a single drop of liquid um, dropping through my scene as you can see now it is a source of liquid flowing into the scene. Okay, as you can see over the top of here, it's still rendering away. Now, uh, while it's rendering, I'll show you a few other little things as well. I'm sitting down here in the, um, in the domain world. We are using liquids with a viscosity, like a thickness, a runniness of water right now. If you really wanted to, you could go through and change the viscosity to other stuff like inside this um, this box. Should I click it now? I'll give it a go. Um, you can change it to stuff like oil, which is quite thick, and honey, which is even thicker. Or you can go through and determine your own viscosity. Okay, let's have a look at this. I'll just bring it back to the beginning. Okay, and I shall just press the play button. So you can see, it's a source of liquid. Liquid's coming out of there and filling up. And even on a hideously low resolution um, liquid, it's not looking too shabby. Okay. We're going to leave it at that. And um, feel free to play around with the settings. You know, that's the way to learn in Blender. Playing with all the settings. Okay. Oh, and of course the wiki. Have a good day. And um, see you some other time.